welcome to this review of my Game K or Gamma K or whatever TK75 HE keyboard. Recently I noticed that YouTube is putting ads on my videos even though they're not monetized, so just to try and prevent them from monetizing this one. Anyway, this was a donation from Gamma K. During the unboxing I noticed immediately that it bears an uncanny resemblance to a key disc keyboard that I reviewed a while ago, and there are some others that are probably in the same boat. I contacted Gamma K and asked them about who the real OEM of these products is, and they completely ignored my question, so I guess I don't know. But it's basically a clone keyboard. I was kind of hesitant to review this keyboard in the first place if I'm honest, and as such don't think of this as a typical review, but more as a sort of philosophical musing. See, this is a contactless, specifically Hall Effect, keyboard, and that used to be enough for me to jump at the opportunity to review it, as contactless keyboards were quite a breakthrough in keyboard design, and I find them very interesting, and as my more faithful viewers will know, I try to review stuff that's interesting and or innovating rather rather than just boring dime a dozen keyboards. However, because of the success of earlier models like the SteelSeries Apex Pro and the Wooting, this technology has become more and more widespread and now we have arrived at this one, where the most interesting fact the manufacturer could come up with is that it's very cheap for a contactless keyboard, which are otherwise quite expensive. This one is $90 at the moment, discounted from $120, with a pre-order price of $85, which in all fairness is not a lot of money for a contactless keyboard. Of course, it's a a rather small form factor, especially compared to these two, which will certainly suppress the manufacturing costs, but still. Now, something being cheap is not normally grounds enough for me to review something, as I find that rather uninteresting, really, and so now we've arrived at a stage where a keyboard being contactless is not reason enough for me to review it. Contactless has become commonplace. But I don't actually mind that one of my favorite keyboard technologies has become somewhat mundane, quite the opposite actually. I'm really very happy that this Switch technology has taken off to the point where it's now affordable and widely available, just like I'd rather not have that my collection of Blue Alps keyboards were so rare. If it were up to me, they'd be available in every computer store, because I very much would like for everyone to be able to use them. And the same goes for Beam Springs, although hopefully in not too long we'll be one step closer to that. In any case, despite the relatively low price, the build quality seems okay. It flexes a fair amount given how small this keyboard is, which is a little bit alarming, and the housing is plastic, weighing in at a total of 823 grams, which is over 200 grams lighter than the key does, by the way. Or in units that think cheese is orange and comes in cans, it weighs 1.8144 pounds. So it's not exactly going to survive a nuclear holocaust, I think. But then again, that's not what you're paying for. Plus, the switch is being whole effect. At least that part should be very durable. And that's the most important thing, I think. Speaking of the switches, they did the whole analog shebang too. It's got adjustable actuation, DKS function, you know, where you can bind multiple different inputs to different push heights within the same switch, rapid trigger option, etc. This is significant as this really elevates a keyboard to the next level, I think, and not all contactless keyboards have this. It's got a 75% form factor, as the model name implies, and it's very similar to the Keydis, but the layout is slightly nicer as the keys here are a little bit more separated. The Keydis has them all jammed into each other. 75% form factors like this give you a relatively good amount of keys for your space, so to speak, so like a compact form factor, it's fairly efficient, although I'm much more partial to a full size myself. But of course, that's down to personal preference. The biggest keyboard they sell, quite unrelated to this, is a TKL, so you're going to be stuck with a cramped keyboard layout regardless here, I think. It's programmed by what I assume is yet another Electron program, a small widget that controls the lighting and the adjustable actuation, etc. This one is actually not mostly in Chinese, which is the case for a lot of other keyboards in this category, but it still looks but ugly. 
It's functional though. By default, the actuation was set at 0.5mm, which is absurdly sensitive. I kept making mistakes constantly. There is a way to adjust it between several pre-programmed profiles using hotkeys on the keyboard, which is nice, but none of the three preset profiles, really only 0.5 and 2.0mm, suited me, so I stuck it at 2.5mm instead, and now it's fine. The switches, I think they're called Linear Mercury or something, are branded with their own branding and the board is hot swappable, as is often the case for contactless keyboards. These switches are light linears, also typical for most contactless keyboards. They also do a presumably dampened version called the Silent Phoenix switch. They're really quite light and smooth. They bottom out at 60 grams with an extrapolated preload of 30 grams, so pretty much the same as Cherry MX Red, which I guess is kind of the gold standard of light linears. The lack of friction makes it feel a tiny bit lighter though in my opinion, however I like that it's so light, it makes you appreciate the smoothness more. They make the cherries feel really spongy by the way, the difference in key feel really shows in that regard. Compared to other contactless keyboards, the smoothness is definitely up there. I tend to compare boards like this to what I think of as the gold standards of contactless keyboards, namely the SteelSeries Apex Pro and the Wooting 2, and I really can't detect a difference in smoothness, so that's good. Not all contactless keyboards are equally smooth, but the top tier ones are so frictionless that the differences between them tend to become unnoticeable. In terms of weighting, they feel like they've got a smidge more weight at the top compared to the Apex Pro, which is one of the lighter models out there, but it feels lighter than the Wooting. Honestly, switch-wise, it's pretty good, I think. The keycaps are double-shot PBT in a very cherry-like style, and pretty nice to be honest. They're quite thick, and they look good, simple but elegant. I think these will work well. Note that should you want custom keycap sets, they're of course harder to get and fit on a form factor like this. I'm kind of bored talking about it now if I'm honest, but like I said, I guess the thing I wanted to muse about was that contactless keyboards have become somewhat of a banality, which is excellent news. There are other ones I like more than this one, but all of the real top tier ones are much more expensive. For example, a Wooting 2 HE costs more than twice as much, and while I think that one is definitely nicer, is it really more than twice as good? I don't know, beyond the layout I mean, obviously. Anyway, that's it for this review, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.